Hello, hello. What's up, everybody? How we doing, Renation fam? Thank you so much for being here. Make sure that you guys go and smack up that like button if you're excited to be here. And go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Normally, with these types of games, I do put on a member-only chat. Uh, but I'm just going to see how it goes for a little bit. And if it gets a little too cray-cray then we might have to switch it back to member uh, only chat, okay? But it is subscriber only right now. But yeah, what's up guys? How's it going? I'll read off some comments before we dive on in. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and tell you guys before we get to some comments and to some names. Uh, this game is called The Raven, obviously, as uh, you see on the screen and in the title. It is a remastered game. Um, but it is like a murder mystery train type of game. It's really cool. It's really interesting. I did stream this game probably about like two years ago. Um, but uh, I, I just kind of wanted to redo it, you know. Things have changed since then. But uh, I thought it would be cool to stream this for you guys. So, um, yeah. What's up, Thomas? How you doing, Ghost? Darren, Junior, Maritza. We got Dream in the building. Connor, Jader, Ghana, Coop, Kong, Tommy, Chris, Flex, Faze, Johnny. What's up, AJ? How are you? What's up, Dis? What's up, Dash? What's up, guys? Hi, Grant. Hi, everybody. Yeah, like I said, if it gets a little too bad, we might have to switch it back to member-only mode, but we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see, okay? So let's go ahead and do a new game. There are three chapters to this. Um, so yeah. Alright. Jordan, I appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, Jay. What's up, Bazooksy? Zach. Oh, and thank you, Ghana, for the donation. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing fabulous. If I need to turn down audio, turn up audio, let me know. Raven's heir. <laughs> Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? Harold? Sleeping on the job? Come on, Harold. Harold, you hear me? This is no time for fun and games. Oh, shoot. Shh! Calm down. No, a copper. We're on the same side. A copper? What are you doing here? And where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Oh, good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean... the Raven's heir? Shh! Turn it off! He's gonna steal the eye. But... how do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him. Do you understand? Yeah, but... Do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now, we just have to... What? Uh-oh. It's gone. Halt!
I don't have time to play. I'm on duty. Oh, man. <laughs> You're funny, but you don't look like a real cop. You don't even have a revolver. <laughs> All right, okay, so this is going to be definitely, um, like I said, it's like a storyline type of puzzle, murder mystery, jewel thief type, type of game. And we are given several different options to choose from with dialogue, so make sure you guys follow along, all right? Like I said, if you need to, grab your snacks, do what you gotta do. All right, he should go away. Who is he, toy guy? He should go away. Disturbing a Swiss officer while he reads a crime novel is a very serious offense. I could arrest you. But I have a <laughs> pistol, and you don't. Toy and gun? why do you need a gun? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns. No do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is, do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre, and those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was. Although, I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels. What's your name, boy? My name is Matthew Miller. And where are you from, Matthew Miller? From Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. But my mom and I live in England now. She's taking care of some rich old lady. We're on our way to Venice at the moment. We're taking a cruise on a big ship. Impressive. You've that? already seen half the world. I've spent my entire life in Switzerland. Must be really boring. You do know, these days there are thieves far more dangerous than your old raven. Two days ago, a precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And you know what the papers say? <clears throat> oh, you talk too much, Constable. Zellner, monsieur. Anton Jakob Zellner. Or did he pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Dang, bossy. Inspector Legrand, it's a great honor to work with a celebrity like you. We appreciate the support of the Swiss police, but it'd be better if you'd remain seated and keep an eye on things. But, monsieur, surely I can be of assistance somehow. I saw a safe being loaded. We have everything under control. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. Shoo, I ain't gonna I'm not here you. to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I, I am a good observer, and I have finally honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watched the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> That would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner, if you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? Hmm. What are you, what is he doing on the train? A holiday, searching for someone, he's guarding something. Well, he said something about in the back, right? I think you're guarding something. Oh, really? And what might it be? Whatever's inside the safe. Facts. <laughs> I really couldn't say. But it must be very important. Why is that? Because you are very important. They wouldn't have assigned the case to you if it were just a trifle. 
<laughs> Let's assume that we really are transporting something very important on this train. And let's assume that it really is my job to see that it arrives safely. Then why isn't the train crawling with police? Mm. More men are in necessary. It's a trap. Don't arouse attention. You don't want to arouse attention? If you don't, but why not? It's a trap, it's, bro. It's a trap. <laughs> You've got a vivid imagination. I'll give you that. Well, that is impressive, I admit. But the fewer people involved, the better. We'll get along fine without you. You won't. Won't? <laughs> Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You're in my country. And I've been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do. Whether you like it or not. Thank hmm. you. Clever and stubborn. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zana. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Bon voyage. But how do you know? <laughs> <sighs> I don't like that dude. He seems too oh, bossy. Hello. You cheated. I did oh. what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself. And you were just pretending to put two and two together. And what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? <laughs> to the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa! It was him? Mm-hmm. Hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change his mind. Hmm, do you want to learn more about the... Nah, nah, nah. Oh, wait. Bro, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. This morning, I thought I wouldn't be hungry because of all the excitement. Thankfully, I bought a sandwich with me anyway. apple core in the sandwich paper. That way I can carry it without making a mess of my trouser pocket. Still, I'd prefer not to have to carry them all day. The napkin came with the croissant I bought at the train station. A guilty pleasure. I don't need that either. Every table has its own waste basket. Practical. No need to ever leave your seat. Every table... What the heck? He's just gonna leave it there? That is no trash can, my guy. All right. That is not a trash can. <laughs> what in the world? That thing was so big that thing up well hopefully you guys are having a great day though thanks for being here once again um hopefully uh hopefully you guys have actually I had a past you know few couple days that were good you nervous my guy's nervous what's that the violinist is a good looking fellow and he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape of the world. But one can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. Ooh, he's shaking. Ooh. Hello, sir. Hello. 
Are you traveling to Istanbul non-stop? No. I'll transfer in Venice to a ship. I'm on my way to Cairo. Cairo? I'm performing at a reception in the Egyptian Museum there. Fancy. I'm sure your recital will be a great success. But tell me, did you notice anything unusual on the train? Anything unusual? Persons acting suspiciously, for instance. For heaven's sake, is that cause for concern? Everything is in order, sir. We Swiss are just very cautious people. I understand. No, I didn't notice anything. Have a good trip. Thank you. The violinist is a good-looking fellow, and he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape in the world. But one can only hope that his violin... Very kind of you. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Oh, my. Oh. Oh. Did he just... Pardon me. Uh-uh. No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Wow. Uh, Mr... Lucio. Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. You don't say. Hmm, okay. So, you were, shall we say, an eyewitness to the burglary two days ago? No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? Well, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum and it didn't concern you? Well, let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. <laughs> Why is he so sus? Okay, let's talk about Inspector Legrand. Whatever you say. The famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. I imagine you know him. Uh, no. Should I? You don't know him? And you also don't know what he's doing here? No. <laughs> Why should I? Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. Hmm. Okay. May I ask where you are going? Of course. To Venice. I'm going to meet some colleagues there. Oh, Venice. A beautiful city, or so I'm told. Indeed. But I really have to take my leave now. Shoot, everyone's so stirred up. Just one more thing. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Here? On the train? No. I can't say that I have. Although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. All right, let me... I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time. But you do understand, don't you, that what concerns me is the present and especially the robbery at the museum. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just, I I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual, won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. What's this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah, we'll sort it out somehow. Yo, the compartment is locked. <laughs> but I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward, he was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right, just wait here. Maybe all his Pokemon cards are inside, and he's afraid somebody else might take them. He said, please, hurry, I need the key. I need to open up all my Pokemon cards. <laughs> the vicarage in the mirror. For years. All right, all right, all right, all right. This is the first it. car. The coal tender should uh, be directly uh. beyond this door, and in front of it, the engine. We on a mission. The large map shows the different routes of the Orient Express. This train began in Paris and ends in Istanbul, as usual. Unfortunately, it will make most of its journey without me. Pokemon cards. Anything but that. Oh no. 
I like how he's just knocking on the door like somebody's actually in there. I'm I don't in. believe it. I never thought I'd ever meet you. Uh, pardon me, but we'd prefer... It's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading the vicarage in the mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. Dang, she don't want to talk. Hi, Nick. Hi, Tristan and Joseph. All right. So, oh, apparently this lady, this old lady right here is the author of the book that I'm reading. May I ask what you're doing here? Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was a little girl. It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, this must be a holiday. You quit writing? Impossible. I have all of your books. Your detective partout is my favorite character. Then, I have bad news for you. I killed the old wretch off years ago. Oh my God. I... I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my work, Constable. Oh, well, fine. Too many questions. <laughs> Got it. Abort mission. Goodbye. Are you traveling to Istanbul, Lady Westmacott? No. We are on our way to Venice. From there, we will take a ship to Cairo. As you may know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I fund a few excavations in Egypt. I travel to Egypt by ship as a young woman. And now I'm doing it again as an old woman. I see. As a writer, you must be very observant. Am I right? I mean, you have to study the behavior of people around you to create the characters in your novels, don't you? I solved the mystery of human nature a long time ago, Mr. Zellner. Since then, most people just bore me. Really? <laughs> I oh, had man. the impression you were eyeing me suspiciously as I came in. What do you want to know, Constable? Hmm. Did you notice the man who just walked into the next carriage with a cup of tea? I did. He seemed nervous. He was waiting at the bar for the steward, and since the steward never appeared, he elected to help himself. He took two biscuits. He oh, seems she, pretty young, she was but him. he's already a professor at the British Museum. Interesting. I'll have to talk to him later. Uh, just out of courtesy, of course. Of course. She's like, oh, I get to write more books. Did you notice the blonde man with the violin case? <laughs> oh, no. I certainly did. He introduced himself and tried to make a good impression. People like him are drawn to wealth and fame, like moths to a flame. But his charms failed on you. I know him by name. David Kreutzer. He was a drain on my friend's purse. Do you think he has a money problem? Yes. People like him always have a money problem. No matter how much you give them, they always spend twice as much and complain that they have far too little. Oh. All right, bye, Grant. Did you notice anyone else? What about the doctor? I notice that you've asked me about everyone, <laughs> except for the inspector who went in the direction of the freight car a few minutes ago. Isn't that the Frenchman? Who made his name when he caught the raven? I wouldn't quite say caught. Well, shot. <laughs> Why don't you ask me about him and my theory about what he's doing here? I don't think we should discuss Inspector Legrand's investigation in public. Legrand, right. That was his name. Will he save the day again? Or will you, Constable? As much as I like to keep talking, Duty calls. You were right. Madam? I did observe you as you came in. You seemed so uh, eager. I... It's been a long time since I've had a chance to prove myself, madam. And this is it. Your chance. I do hope so. Then grab it. Even small people can make big changes. Facts. As my friend Ronald likes to say. I shall do my best. I don't like... I don't like the brownie over to the left. Miss Miller, Miss Miller just looks like she got an attitude. Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. Very diligent, but she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt, and a difficult bus from what they say. 
Oh, I guess that's what adulting looks like. Tense and stressful. <laughs> <clears throat> the steward must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally, he would offer them discreetly after dinner. Yeah, I figured I'd just go ahead and stream it again. Just redo the redo the game. Ah, uh, Mr. Zelna. Right, right. How can I help you? Tell me, did you notice anything suspicious here on the train or in Zurich? You mean, except for the fact that my suitcase was stolen on the platform? No. Is there any reason to be concerned? No. Just routine. Constable Zelna, please don't think I'm naive. I spotted the inspector from Interpol. Legarde is his name, if I recall correctly. Le Grand. If you say so. At the train station in Zurich, he put a cash box into the safe and then kept close watch as it was loaded onto the train. Don't tell me that a man at his pay grade routinely tramps across the Alps just to keep an eye on cash boxes. A cash box? Like the ones you'd find in safe deposit boxes? Precisely. And I believe we both have a good idea just what's inside. I do indeed have a theory, but what's yours? A ruby was stolen in London. One of the legendary Eyes of the Sphinx. The second jewel, an emerald, is rumored to be in a Swiss bank vault, if I remember correctly. Both jewels were supposed to be exhibited together in Cairo for the first time in 50 years. It does make one wonder. Indeed. Any news about the robbery in London? Quite something, wasn't it? It must have been professionals. The way they disabled one of the best security systems in the world. Most impressive. People were injured. Well, one cannot execute a robbery of that scale without uh, uh, collateral damage. It seems like the Raven has finally found a worthy successor. We can look forward to new and spectacular coups. I'm afraid I won't enjoy his exploits this time around if the new Raven is so reckless. That's your prerogative. May I borrow your newspaper? You can take the section with the article on the burglary. You're interested in that bit, aren't you? <laughs> you caught me out. Here you go. Dankeschön. Does anyone know what that means? Does that mean thank you? I'm pretty sure that means thank you. There's something else. Do you know where the conductor is? Hmm. I'd like to know that myself. I told him to search for my missing suitcase in Zurich. He hasn't got back to me yet. He's probably in cahoots with the thieves and didn't bother getting back on the train. If we don't crack down on vermin like them, the rabble will rule the world one day. Well... At the moment, we still don't know what really happened. He is not here doing his job. That's bad enough. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, later, Constable. Doctor. It was a pleasant chat, really. Gum? No, I'm, I, he just built that way. Why you bully? <clears throat> Why are you such a bully? <laughs> Hi, Rob. Terry, what's up? Um... The ladder leads up to the roof. It will be suicidal to climb up there while the train is at full speed. The wind, tunnels... Uh, no, I'll stay down here. Security cat. Hmm. A box with a padlock. I suppose it contains tools for the train's crew, maybe for coupling and uncoupling the cars. At any rate, it's positioned so that it's easier to reach from the ground than from up here. Locked. Bang! 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 Oh! Huh? Don't move! Mad! Have you gone mad? I'll shoot! Hey, my pistol! You'll get it back in Venice. 
I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. One just flew past the window. Yes, yes, sure. Now get moving. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I could I strongly suspect that the door is locked. No, it's open. <laughs> Ralph. Yeah, heck yeah, of course. Why, why one time? Hello? Wow. Don't move a muscle, you feathered fiend. Put the gun down, Robert. If I may introduce Constable Robert Oliver from the yard. And this is the revered Constable Zellner of the Swiss police, who obviously couldn't control his curiosity. No, no, no. Then I was right. You really do want to lure someone into a trap. That's none of your business. Perhaps that someone recently struck in London. And how would I bait my trap then? With an eye? An eye on its way from Zurich to Cairo. <laughs> Someone has done his homework. Well done, Constable. I hope you'll acknowledge that I, as a Swiss policeman, can undertake investigations in my own country. Are we still in Switzerland? I could be your eyes on the train, as long as you're here in the freight car. Oh, really? There is a certain Professor Lucien on the train. He's an archaeologist from London. And what's his story? Well, it seems someone locked him out of his compartment. Locked him out? Well, yes. The door is locked and he's standing outside without a key. Was it locked from inside? It may have been. Hmm. Do you think the locked door could be important? Professor Lucien plays an important role in this story. Well then, Constable Zellner, be my eyes and ears on the train and see that Professor Lucien gets back into his compartment. Report back to me when you're through. My pleasure, monsieur. What do you know of this raven's heir? He tried to blow me up. Robert, we don't know who we're dealing with yet. In any event, the new raven is a more dangerous man than the old one. How do you know it's a man? It could just as easily be a woman. Or several men. And anyway, how do you know that it's a new raven? Monsieur? Never mind. I go attend to the door now. Good. And Constable Zellner? Yes? Don't bother us unless you have something new to report. Of course. A thief might get anxious if there's too much activity in the freight car. Exact amount. Knock twice. Then we'll know that it's you. Understood. Someone who actually just sits there and says, don't bother me, it makes you want to bother them even more, right? An investigation on behalf of Legrand that takes me one step closer. If I can convince him of my competence, I might even be able to see this case through to the end. Really, Jason? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Didn't that kid say he saw a ghost fly past the window? That seems a little suspicious to me. Mmm, mm, butterscotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, <laughs> they don't play nice with false teeth. Right, Ralph? Honestly. Mmm, maybe if I just suck it. Anyone like butterscotch? Who would have thought that one day butterscotch would remind me of my age and of all the things I had to leave behind? I suppose the steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence. The pad on which the steward writes orders, empty. Maybe he didn't use it because there's not much to do today. I don't need the pad, but the pencil might come in handy. Perhaps he keeps the compartment keys in there. Locked. 
The luck is so cheap that I could easily pick it. If I want to impress Legrand, I should probably just do it. Don't He's famous for his unconventional methods. We have a toothpick, right? I need a bit of wire or something like that to pick the lock. Mm. I bought it last week at a flea I suppose. A shortwave radio. It's amazing how small these things have become in the last 10 years. The steward probably uses the scissors on hard to open packages. These days nearly everything is sealed up tight. A colleague recently told me about dry powdered soup in small bags. I couldn't believe it. This is the steward's own little, but as long as... Okay, all right. We'll have to find a piece of wire. Butterscotch on its own, but if it's like with chocolate or something, it's pretty good. Oh, a constable? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, my son didn't make any trouble for you, I hope. It's just that he just walked past us, silent and seething. That's usually a sign that someone's laid down the law. I'm afraid so. He played a trick on me, a rather dangerous one. The lad left me no choice but to take away his wooden pistol as a punishment. I understand. And thank you. Maddie is a very lively child. Sometimes he needs a strong fatherly hand. Where is Matt's father, if I may ask? He's... he's gone. Ah, I understand. Could you, uh, leave Maddie's pistol here, perhaps? So you don't have to bother with it? Of course. I told him he wouldn't get it back until Venice. Hi, Adam. Very well. Thank you again, Constable. Girl, you gonna give me something? I just gave you that back. You should at least give me something. Uh, Mrs. Miller? Yes? Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Oh, I'm afraid not. I was totally focused on my work. She's always got an awful lot to do, my Mary. I'm you have to tell me her. if that's not all right with you. Good Lord, child. Knit as much as you want. Mm -hmm. So, nothing out of the ordinary? No, Constable. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. On tea. That is straight up facts, though. That is straight up facts. My goodness gracious. What's up, dude? He's still just chilling here? What's going on? He doesn't make a very balanced impression. And he, of all people, isn't bothered by a robbery in. Yeah, that's weird. Perhaps a thoughtful conductor noticed that Professor Lucien wasn't in his compartment and locked it. Do you have it? Can we use a toothpick on this? Oh my goodness. Professor Lucien. I want to talk to him. Yes? Do you have the key? Actually, I want it. Please, I have to go back to my compartment. Swiss are crazy about trains. We don't just have a lot of railroads. We have the most beautiful ones in the world. Oh, I can. Would you be so kind as to close the window? I don't want to sit in the draft. Oh, pardon me. Sure. 
should should I ask for an autograph? That will be quite unprofessional. But on the other hand, hello, Matt. <laughs> the silent oh, treatment. come on! Are you going to be angry with me for the rest of the trip? Until I get my pistol back. I gave it to your mother. Oh, man. Couldn't you have just raked me over the coals? Would you have learned anything from that? I didn't learn anything from this either. Oh, no. Come on, oh, Matt. Did you really think that you can ignore me for longer than I can ignore you? I'm Swiss. It's practically a national sport. <laughs> okay, okay. Do you like a butterscotch? You think you can bribe me? I have no reason to. You made trouble and got punished for it. Take it as a peace offering. Just four? If I'm faster than wow. you, there'll only be three. Hey! Friends again? Mm hmm All right then. <laughs> and no dangerous nonsense anymore. Okay. Okay, hi Yolanda. Your mother is Lady Westmacott's companion, correct? Yeah, but it's not like you think. At first I thought, boy, you must be really wicked if you need to pay for friends. But the lady's really okay. A bit odd and really old. But other than that, she's great. She likes me. The lady has peculiar taste. Hey! <laughs> you and your mother, do you both live on Lady Westmacott's estate? I'm only there for the holidays. Most of the time I'm at boarding school. I imagine that's not very pleasant. No, it's fine. I have friends there. You always have to be so quiet in the ladies' house. And I'm not allowed to bring any friends. Such a big house with so many places to hide. And no one to play hide and seek with. You said it. And how long has your mother worked for the lady? Two years. And your father? What does he do? He stayed home. I used to go fishing with him and hunting. He even let me shoot a real gun. And then? Then Mom fought with him, and he left. I was seven. Oh, and uh, how old are you now? In eight months, I'll be nine years old. And do you already know what you want to be when you grow up? A burglar? A burglar? <laughs> no, we'll see. Maybe an actor. Really? Well, I don't know. You need a lot of talent for that. I'm an actor in a theater group, you know? You are? Oh, yes. And I'm one of the best in our group, if I may say so. I get really deep into my roles, you know? I don't just talk like the character. I think like him. I become him. It's the only way to... <coughs> Matt, are you okay? <coughs> I think you just have to be good at copying things to be an actor. Wow. That... that wasn't bad. Disturbing, but not bad. Tell me, have you seen the steward anywhere? Mm, no. He was walking around a little while ago, though. Hopefully they didn't forget him in Zurich. <laughs> What's he supposed to do? I'm looking for a key to open a compartment door. Did you check his things behind the counter? I'm sure the drawers will be locked. Can't you break it open? Or pick the lock like the raven? Perhaps. But I'd need a piece of wire or something like that. Ask my mom. <laughs> she has a lot of hairpins. She doesn't like the wind messing up her hair. Mm. Thanks for the tip. So long. So longer. <laughs> Who says that? So longer. Hi, Beast. Ah, oh, that kid's a trip. Major. Major trip. Mrs. Miller? Yes? Uh, please excuse my unusual request, but Matt said you have some hairpins. Could I borrow one? One of my hairpins? It's a long story. It would be a big help. Well, if you really need one. Go ahead, Mary. The constable won't do it any harm. Will you, Mr. Zellner? 
Of course not, madam. All right. In green coat. Is this one okay? It'll do nicely, madam. How very kind of you. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. Later. Have fun knitting. And suddenly, it's me who's the thief on the train. Same thing, Oops. right, Jader? That was easier <laughs> than expected. Oh, man. Hmm. Batteries, a toothbrush, a shaving brush. What's a doctor? But not the key to the compartment door. Just this one. Hmm. Too small for the door, but it might still be useful. save right just in case <laughs> oh man that's it there we go this should help I have everything I need. doesn't work with this kind of lock. I need something. Can you use this key too? No, that's it. I need a bigger. I bet I could really get a grip on the bolt with these. Well, come on then, hurry up. Hello? Please hurry up. I barely Is left the window patient. ajar. Uh, nothing to see. Are you okay? Hmm? My Pokemon yes. cards are still there. Don't worry. He's so relieved. Do you have any idea why the door was locked? I don't know. Uh, maybe the constant vibrations caused the lock to lock itself. You can't possibly believe that. Well, then what's your theory? The conductor could have locked it from the outside. On the other hand, it could have been someone here in the compartment who locked the door from the inside. Who? And where have they gone? They could have climbed out there. Who would be that insane? You tell me, Professor. Hello, Basim. What's up, Marvel? So, what are you hiding in your bag? What do you have that would be worth stealing? No, Sorry, nothing. Guards. No valuables? Well, certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> not on my salary. It was enough for a first-class compartment on a luxury train. That's my business. You're playing a dangerous game, Professor Lucien. I'd like to look around a bit. Of course. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. 
No, oh my gosh. We don't want to leave. So <laughs> go back in there. Oh my goodness gracious. I accidentally clicked the Professor wrong button. Professor Lucienne. Yeah, let me in. How can I help you, Constable Zelda? You can't. I'd like to have a look around the... Oh, uh... What's this? It's a button. What do you have there? It's a button. From a suit or a uniform, I guess. The burglar might have lost it. Maybe, or maybe not. If I notice anyone with a missing button on his jacket, I'll ask him about it. But I wouldn't get my hopes up. If there was a burglar, he climbed out the window and jumped off the train. Hmm. Assuming there really was someone in the compartment, and he climbed out the window, where's he gone? I really wonder what the professor is hiding from me. But I can't just rifle through the luggage of innocent citizens. This is the 60s. <laughs> hmm. No. Nothing interesting. Good cop. Good cop. Whoa. Oh you have a very nice fountain pen. Pricey. If you'd managed to decode hieroglyphics that boggled the best minds of the last 3,000 years, you'd have received a gift like that as well. Big in. The Bible? Grimm's fairy tales, Moby Dick, and gin, whiskey, and rum. All classics. Hmm, there anything else? He's hiding something from me, and I have to find out what it is. Goodbye, Professor. Good... Later. <laughs> this man. This dude. Sheesh. You think he's really a professor? What do we think? What do we got? We got a small key still, a button, hairpin, a pencil, toothpick. The wooden toothpicks are packed into small paper wrappers. Nothing unusual. Alright, let's talk to this dude again. There could be many reasons for the violinist shaking hand. Strained nerves? An illness? My money's on alcohol. It wouldn't be the first musician who ruined his career that way. I hate that. I don't know what more. Alright. Let's talk this home, home dog again. I have no idea what I'd. No? Mm. Now we can't talk to little Timmy. The little label on the door reads Baroness von Trebitz. Blue blood on the Orient Express. Alright. Maybe, maybe let's go back into the uh, back uh, train car. Oh. Uh, pardon me, sir. We could have used you a few minutes ago. Uh, where'd he come from? Mrs. Miller? Yes? Thank you for your hairpin, Mrs. Miller. It really got me out of a jam. Oh, really? That's good to hear. And thank you for bringing it back to me. Not everybody would have. I'm a Swiss policeman, madam. I couldn't do otherwise even if I tried. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. Jader, he, he got a little sweaty. He got a little An hot. extraordinary woman. <laughs> Talented, intellectual, extremely rich, and the most successful writer of all time. Yet, they say she can be difficult on occasion, and that she's rather unhappy. Mm. I have a... I'd better let him read...
Everybody on the train. Inspector Legrand, anything to report? I got Professor Lucien into his compartment using a pair of pliers. Did you notice anything inside the compartment? The window was open. Someone could have climbed out. And the professor? Acted suspiciously. He rummaged around in his leather bag. And? He seemed to have found what he was searching for. Good. Good work. Now, perhaps you could give me some information. All right. We should. What? The light's gone out. Flashlights! Ah, get off me. There, sir. An envelope. My dear Nico, you should take a closer look at the box. Ah, what the dickens? It's, it's a... Away with it! Take cover! too good so i don't know what to tell you <laughs> uh oh <laughs> you got other stuff to do but you can't stop watching this you know it'll i'll upload it it'll be on the playlist section on the channel so if you miss some parts you can always go look for it there okay <coughs> under the raven <coughs> oh dear oh is everyone all right are you hurt Are you hurt? Quick thinking. Well done, Zellner. <coughs> I think the tunnel collapsed. Then he's trapped. Hurry, we have to lock the second exit. Sir, there's a fire up ahead. The engine's burning. It's a distraction. Hurry, block the exit. But, sir... <coughs> the fire will consume all the oxygen. He's right, Inspector. A fire in a narrow tunnel is extremely dangerous. Merde! Go to the front of the train, find the engineer, and tell him to move the train out of the tunnel. Yes, sir. Are you ready? You have to uncouple the freight car. You understand? <coughs> I understand. Why does he do it? I'll see to the passengers. They should all wait in the tunnel. We'll check each one in turn as they go out. Let's get to it. Making me do all the work. Didn't he say in the beginning he didn't need my work, um, my help or anything? Hi, Kason. They didn't translate because that's a naughty word. Naughty, naughty. I'm sure I could uncouple the car if I only had enough light to see what I'm doing. If I had like matches or something. I got a wallet and some pills. Pills for my heart. I'm supposed to take one if I have pain. I haven't needed them yet. I guess that's a good thing. My God, what a fire. I hope Constable Oliver can at least reach the engine. A lot was damaged by the sudden stop, but the bowl was thick enough to survive the fall. 
the last of the candy has vanished. Measured against the exploding freight car, I think the railway will overlook the loss. No good. Insert for practical. Champagne. Maybe we'll open a bottle if we get out of the tunnel. Whiskey, scotch, rum. Hi, LJ. What's up, Sandy? Hmm. High proof rum. Could be useful. Pardon me, I did not mean to scare you. What are you doing here, Doctor? Legrand asked me to check whether there are any passengers left on the train. Really? No one is here, except for me and you. Excellent. Then I will continue searching at the front. Did anyone act suspiciously before the explosion? Did anyone leave their seat, for example? I was the only one on the train who wasn't seated when the freight car exploded. Thank God. Otherwise, I would have been caught by the blast as well. You certainly were lucky. Perhaps I was. What happened over there? The inspector said something about gas canisters that exploded. He didn't want to scare you. The truth is, it was a bomb meant to kill him and the bobby. My God. An attack. But who would... The investigations are ongoing, but first we have to get the burning train out of the tunnel. Oh, of course. How are the passengers? They are in a state of shock, of course. The blackout and the sudden stop were frightening enough, but then the explosion, the dust, everyone rushed for the exits. I was helping the American woman bring Lady Westmacott to safety. They are waiting outside in the tunnel. One entrance is blocked by a fire, and the other one seems to have collapsed. Continue to search the train. I'll decouple the buried freight car. All right. Doctor? Can you give me a few matches? Oh, certainly. Thanks. Right, right. I'll meet you outside. Do hurry. Yeah, I love how it gives you, like, options and stuff. I don't see Legrand or the constable, but I can make out the silhouettes of some of the passengers. All the same, the fire is getting bigger, and I don't have much time. The chair either fell over thanks to the sudden stop, or an escaping passenger knocked it over. Warning to get off the train as quickly as possible after a sudden stop and a massive tremor. That's understandable. It's not bothering. That should do it. Can't really say the fabric was eager to soak up the rum. I, on the other hand, soaked up enough in my fingers to smell like a drunk. The last of the candy has vanished. Hmm. Hmm. That'll get me some... I want light. The last of the candy has... Hmm. The last of the candy has vanished. Even if I could set the fabric alight, how would I carry the fire? Hi, Demaria. Yeah, but I think because of the wind, it's going to blow out. There's a pretty intense draft here. The fire is sucking up the oxygen. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. 
I want light. Brum from Austria. <laughs> there you go. That's what I was trying to do. Now, uh, let's see. I want. No, I don't want to do that. I guess we can, uh, the match with that. I filled the bowl about a third of the way with rum. Phew, strong stuff. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. The other passengers escaped from the train. If I don't have I want luck. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I remember this taking me a while too to figure out last time. I filled the bowl about a third of the way with rum. <laughs> Curtain soaked with it. Then you have matches. We already poured some of it in the bowl. And what I was trying to do, I was gonna try to. Well, I don't know how that would work out. I mean, I was thinking about using one of the matches on the bowl, but I don't think that that would work. I know. I'm trying to light it with it. Hi, Chico. Let's see if this works. I filled the bowl about a third of the way with rum. Yeah, no. I filled the... Okay. Oh, wait. What? Wait, did the, did the thing pop up before? I don't think it popped up in my inventory before. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Just as I expected, the alcohol burns with an almost invisible flame. Now... The alcohol on the curtains will burn just as dimly as in the bowl. It's no uh. good. Uh. The flame is hot, but it's no use as... A wow. fine, probably... there's anything else around that I need we've already set on fire but like he said it's no good for any like actual light the flame is hot but it's no use as a light source mm. the chair either warning to It's not bothering me, I'll leave it there. I noticed the extinguisher earlier doesn't match the decor. I suppose that the railway company had to comp It'd be useless against the fire at best. Hmm. Well, even if I could set the fire the chair either fell over, thank warning to get off. Okay. A burning match. No duh. It must be good for something. Oh. 
Do we get to keep it? A burning match. No. We don't get to keep It'd it. It'd be useless against the fire out there, and it's too cumbersome to carry around. At best, I can use it here. Oh, duh. Break the leg off. Okay. Now we're good. Uh, Come on, strong man. <laughs> Going all Incredible Hulk on that chair. All right, let's go. Aye, aye, aye. It's taking too long. I can't the see flame it. is hot. Okay, I get it, big dog. Now we can use that as like a torch. There you go. Okay. Voila. There you go. The alcohol on the curtain burns just as darkly as in the bowl. It's no help. <sighs> Come on, now. Alcohol on the Oh my gosh. Do this and maybe we need a light a match. And then do it like that. Now Okay. The alcohol. The material won't be able to... Hmm... I'm stuck. The material won't be... The material... Okay, I get it. I don't know what you want me to do. The flame is hot. Because that's not working. It ain't bright. Mm. The alcohol burns with a dim blue flame. It doesn't shed enough light and will probably burn out in a few seconds. Flame is hot. Petroleum, no. I ain't got no petroleum. Here, maybe we'll set the leg it's on It's taking fire. too long. Time is running out. Well, I'm trying everything I can, mister. So how about you just calm It's taking too down. long. Calm your little booty down. Wrap this thing up again. Ooh, child. Things aren't getting easier. Say it working. Is it petroleum? You got any petroleum on you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just hold on, why don't you? Hold on. I should concentrate. Okay, yes, sir. This man is so wobbly walking with him. <laughs> he doesn't like walking in a straight line. Let's see if I can go in. No, I can't go another crate. Another crate? The other cart? Words? Sentences? English? Hello? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, you know, 
a fine but rather heavy curtain. Probably doesn't burn easily, like the tablecloths. Safety regulations require it, which, given the present situation, is actually a good thing. No way. It's taking two. Okay, I understand, my guy. The alcohol on the... Can we put it... Hmm. That'll get me something like a Molotov cocktail. I want light, but I don't want it to come from a wall of flames. The material won't be able to... Some matches and half... Oh, the alcohol right? on the curtain burns just as darkly as in the bowl. It's no help. Maybe. A fine, but rather head probably. The okay. flame is. The flame. Oh my gosh. Just, just let it go. Let it go, please. Let it go. Let it go. There's a print. Can't hold it back anymore. <laughs> Why do I have to do this? You know what I mean? Okay, I'll smear some grease on the curtain. I can feel cold metal and a screw thread, and but I can't do more. I'm sure I can uncouple the car if I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got things to do around here, you see? Capish? And I think now we're good. Oh, I probably, sh probably should have should have dipped it in the thingy. I'm a fire. I'm the god of fire. Oh. <laughs> fire king. We got fire. Ooh. I got so many mosquito bites and just bites in general outside yesterday. Oh my goodness. That's better now. Dying. Incredibly basic mechanism. The kind that lasts forever. Okay. Won't budge. A lever on a pressure sleeve running along a thread. Aha! I can uncouple it with this lever. With this lever? lever. Ooh, okay. Alright, alright. <clears throat> There we go. Time to get out of here. Beautiful, darling. Look at that man run. <laughs> Poor lady looks terrified. Listen, everybody. Listen. <laughs> Robert, what's the situation? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find the engineer, so I got in the driver's cab myself and released the brake. <laughs> All right. Good job. You too. 
Listen, please. Matty, where's Matt? Where's my son? Relax, madame. I'm sure. Yes. progress take a break and relax you hear that it's always good to take a break it's always good to relax don't overwork yourself don't stress out you know it's just not worth it matt where are you oh. <laughs> i'm like oh i didn't sign up for this why me what look can we just talk about how bad my knee looks right now look at my knee Matt, are you there? Nothing. Nothing. Hello, Matty. I see you. I see a little socks. Hey, there you are. What were you thinking? Ah, uh, come out of there. Is he gone? Is who gone? The man. The man. <laughs> yeah, I'm the man. I know, I know. Come on. What are you doing on the train anyway? Why didn't you wait in the tunnel with the other passengers? I... I wanted to get my pistol. Your pistol? There's so many cops and thieves and explosions and everything. Then I need a pistol, too. Makes sense. <laughs> oh, man. W what about this man? There was a man. He was coughing. One of the passengers? I think he came down from the roof. <whistles> All right. First, I'll stop the train, and then we'll have a chat, okay? You want to come out? <laughs> Good idea. You stay put. I suppose this handbag belongs to Miss Miller, Matt's mother. Lady West McCart's bag is probably smaller and more expensive. Aha. Uh -huh. Taking his toy now? That's why he came on the train. Hi, Stella. I really need to stop scratching these mosquito bites on my foot. It's driving me insane, though. I can't get in. I presume the Baroness's luggage toppled over and is blocking the door. I can maybe go out the window. Professor Lucien's suitcase. Unlike the leather bag, he left it behind when he fled the train with the other passengers. I don't think there's anything interesting in it. Whatever the professor is hiding from me, it's in his leather bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, terrible. A large, soft towel. Very comfortable. Yeah, it looks like you need to wipe your face, my guy. I'll wrap it around my neck to keep my hands free. <laughs> Hi, Dalen. Hello. My everybody. situation isn't that desperate. What have you got yourself into? Couldn't you have just let it be? But no, of course not. And now you're here on an out of control train in the Alps, responsible for the life of a child who'd be doomed without you. What are you <laughs> waiting for, eh? Time to save the day. The tanks don't seem to be damaged. The water is still running. Hi, Austin. Can we not go out there? Alright. I'll go back out. You can 
hardly see out of the window because of the smoke. I don't know how much coal is burning on the tender up there, but it must be tons. I can't do anything about the fire. Oh, to be honest, we should wet this towel. I don't know why, but we should just wet it. This door leads to the tender. It will be uncomfortable, no doubt, but I don't think that the flames are directly behind the door. I suppose there's a relatively safe space in the lee of the tender where one could stay a little while. I need to stop the train as quickly as possible. There's An access for emergencies. If this isn't an emergency, I don't know what is. Yeah, I look terrifying. Damn, that makes things extremely complicated. How can I stop the train? Here's how. We gonna chop everything up. If the emergency brake doesn't work, I'll have to try something else. <sighs> Here goes. Ouch! Hot! Oh, it's hot, hot. Okay. Okay. We'll do it the hard way. Soaking up the cold water. Let's be honest. Hi, Thiago. Should do the trick. Ah. Are we good? <coughs> <coughs> My poor guy. <coughs> It's not just smoke. I can actually taste lumps of ash. Oh. It's time for my deputy sheriff's story. Omega. I uncoupled the locomotive at full speed. Not bad, eh? Do you think we'll get in trouble? Because of the locomotive? I don't think so. It was pretty old already. Come out so we can have a chat. I checked the entire train. There's no one on it except for us. What an adventure. Oh, yeah. Tell me, what did you see on the train? Uh, well, it was like this. I wanted to get my pistol. And then go bang, bang. Hi, copper. Achoo. Oh, this is like what happened.
Maxim must stay quiet. Not a sound. Achoo! Uh oh. Psych. And then? When the guy was gone, I got up and banged on the window. I wanted to get out of there, but then I thought, what if the guy can hear me from the next car? So I got scared, and I hit again. You did well. Are you sure it was a man? Yeah, very sure. What else could he be? A woman? Huh, <laughs> no. Girls can't be thieves. Wow. Girls are always honest. <laughs> <laughs> if only you knew. Did you recognize the man? Have you met him before? I don't think so. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? No. It was very dark and I was hiding. Was he a tall man or a short man? Just a man. <laughs> I think he was a bad man. Why do you think that? He was sneaking around, even though everybody else was outside in the tunnel. Maybe he just wanted to get his wooden pistol. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> wow. The envelope that the man lost where is it? I thought it might be important. I think we should have a look. Mm. Some cash. An Italian passport. Blank. Very interesting. And here, a ticket for... for... For the cruise! What? The tickets we have for the big ship from Venice to Cairo look exactly the same. Interesting. May I keep it? What do you want to do with it? Take a vacation. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my. Crazy, crazy. Super crazy. It's evidence. And my chance to go with this you. Might be the ticket to you. and everything else in the envelope are part of my investigation. And you have no part to play in Cairo. If I hadn't given you the envelope, you'd have no proof that the Raven's heir would be on the ship. Ugh. The ship is his next chance to steal the eye, and he won't give up until he has it. And that's precisely why you should let me come along. No. I deserve to come along. <sighs> What you did was extraordinary. Far more than anyone could have a right to expect from you. And you still want to leave me behind? You met our foe and barely escaped with your life. You may not be that lucky next time. It wasn't luck. You can return to Switzerland with your head held high. Enjoy your triumph. I have not achieved anything yet. The fiend tried to kill us and he's still at large. What else did you find out in the tunnel? Not much. After we came out of the tunnel, Robert and I questioned the passengers. Which didn't turn up anything new? No. The engineer and the fireman were missing. They were found a few kilometers back on the track. Both claimed to have been overwhelmed by a shadow and thrown off the train. But you don't believe that. I'm checking their stories. One of them may have been paid to eliminate the other one. How could the Raven's heir have found out about the trap? How was he able to put the dynamite in the box and place the letter? The dynamite was probably already in the box when I put it in the safe. I didn't check it. You had no reason to do so. It wasn't my only mistake. I knew someone was on the roof of the freight car, but I let myself be distracted by that damned letter. How did you know? You Too late. I should have reacted instantly. I'm coming with you. Full stop. The thief was able to place ten sticks of dynamite in a cash box right under my nose. For all we know, you could already be sitting on the next bomb. You cannot come. How but, rude. Inspector... He needs me. I bet I, you need me. You need us. We're here.
Inspector Legrand, an urgent telegram from Paris. Bad news? It's about the unfortunate events on the train. I'm to return to Paris and explain myself. But, sir, what about the eye? They want to inform the Egyptian authorities that there might be a burglary attempt. Might? Egyptian authorities? What if the jewel is stolen at sea? I know, I know. I never oh. received it. Keep a close watch on the loading of the eye, Robert. Aye, sir. It was a pleasure meeting you, Constable Zellner. What is the constable's problem with me? I think he's jealous. Scotland Yard assigned him to assist me, just as you were sent by the Swiss authorities. Uh, with the distinction that he may go to Egypt. Robert is to accompany me at all times. Your mission was restricted to Switzerland. At this moment, I want to be sent back to Switzerland just as much as you want to be sent back to Paris. I know, but I'm walking on thin ice, and I can't carry you too. And the second eye is in that safe? Yes, an emerald. It's been kept in a bank in Zurich since the start of the war. I personally took it out of the bank vault and Professor Lucien certified that it was the real thing. And while a fake jewel was sent by train, the real one was brought here in an armored car. How is it protected? You can only open the safe if you have three special keys. Professor Lucien has one, and Baroness Van Trebitz, who's paying for all this, has the second. The third was sent by air courier to Dr. Abbas Mokhtar, the director of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. So, not even you could possibly open the safe before it arrives in Egypt. That's correct. We don't want to make it too easy for potential thieves. Commendable. I hope you're aware of the fact that you're risking your career. Indeed I am. Why do you care so much about this case? Someone pretends to be the Raven, and you promptly risk your career? What if he's not just pretending? What do you mean by that? It's his handwriting. And there's only one person who ever called me Nico. Have you ever considered the possibility that I shot the wrong man? But wh what do you mean by that? Let us assume just for a moment that the person I shot and who fell from the roof was not the Raven. Who would have cared enough to uncover the truth? The chief of police? The politicians? No. They wanted to revel in a successful manhunt. And it was the best thing that could have happened to the Raven. The search for him was over. <laughs> he had no reason to fear me anymore. I had so many medals afterwards that he could hear them jingling kilometers away. And now he's back? And you're the only one who can stop him? Does that sound probable to you? The feathers, the letters, Nico. No one outside the police force knew that the Raven used to call me that in his letters. Policemen gossip, and there are plenty of forgers. You can't seriously intend to stake your reputation on such weak evidence. My reputation rests on something that I probably did not do. I have to find out who's behind all this. Let's review. One of the two most valuable jewels in the world was stolen. Obviously, the second one will be next. And you suspect a legendary burglar who's been dead for five years. Go on. The second jewel is about to be put on board over there, in a safe that requires three keys. Our thief may already have the first key, the archaeologist's key, from the train. We don't know anything about the status of the second key, which was meant to be air freighted to Cairo. We have to assume that he already has it. Therefore, there's just one key left. The Baroness's. Correct. So, you'll need my eyes on board. Look, you can keep your eyes open for me here on the wharf. I'd be most grateful. But when this ship sets sail, you will not, I repeat, not be on board. But, Inspector... We're dealing with a dangerous man, and I will pursue him regardless of the consequences. I won't let you get mixed up in this affair. It's still my decision. No, it's not. It's mine, and I've already made it. Good day, Constable Zellner. Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah, I'm not gonna talk over them. <laughs> Alright, but, um, anyways, this one is gonna be chapter two, so we'll leave this for tomorrow's stream. Um, but we did get through chapter one, which was pretty cool. Hopefully you guys did end up enjoying it. I'm gonna go ahead and save it just in case, but yeah. Yeah, there you go. Alright. Um, <laughs> that scribble was so intense, right? Um, but yeah, if you guys did end up enjoying it, make sure that you guys go ahead and smack up that like button for me and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and turn on post notifications. I will be live, uh, maybe in like three hours for, um, for some Fortnite and stuff. But, uh, we will see you guys later. If not, we'll see you guys for chapter two tomorrow. Um, but yeah. So, since there's there's only three chapters, just, I can't speak, there's only three chapters, so I'll probably do this one tomorrow, we'll leave the chapter three for next Monday, and then, you know, I, uh, I, have, I have another cool game after this one coming up, but uh, I only just wanted to restream this one just because I kind of didn't really have time to download a new game and purchase a new game, because I've been a little busy, but, um, Hopefully you enjoyed, uh, but yeah, we'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for checking it out, and until next time, if you guys want to check out the more of the chapters, or if you didn't fully watch all of this, you can always check it out on the channel under playlist under The Raven. So, check it out, and we'll see you guys later. Bye!